Namaste to all of you, dear friends, learners and seekers. This welcome from Dhananjay Kumar is to a journey of wisdom, self-realization, global peace and harmony and a greater expansion of mind so we can think big, act big for the long-term future of our society and civilization. And a great amount of help in that process is possible through the words of greatest thinkers, philosophers, scientists, of the world, both men and women. So the topic for this video episode is soul. We all have pondered about that question, what is soul, what is my soul? And in the beginning of that journey, we or many of us tend to think that I exist, there is no doubt about that. I have a body, mind, wisdom, likes, dislikes, desires, all of that I have. And soul is somewhere within me. I have a soul, just like I have a lot of other things. But if we do a slight reverse exploration, that I am, my awareness of myself is somewhere in between my true self, true soul, which is wrapped in this body and mind and thoughts and desires and likes and dislikes. So this kind of uh, reverse thinking may actually help in the process instead of confusing us in the process. So the first quotation is, so this message is from the Upanishads. Concealed in the heart of all beings, concealed in the heart of all beings is the Atman the soul, the spirit, the self, which is smaller than the smallest and greater than the vast spaces. So smaller than the smallest and greater than the greatest gives the concept that it is infinite. It is infinite. And anything that is infinite is also timeless. So it is beyond time, beyond space. So that is the important indication, important gesture, important pointer in the understanding and realization of the soul. Another dimension is shown by this quotation by Carl Gustav Jung. I simply believe that some part of human self or soul is not subject to the laws of space and time. So not subject to laws of space and time could be because the soul is beyond the limitation of space and time. But the first part, first few words of this quotation creates a little doubt in saying that some part of human self or soul is not subject to laws of space and time, which means some part is subject to 
laws of state and space and time. This suggests that the soul is both in space and time and beyond space and time. Very interesting thought. But the first part I was referring to, I simply believe. So, I simply believe kind of suggests uh, a common man's approach that I have not encountered, I have not experienced, but this is some kind of a belief I have. I believe that the definition of soul is such and such. So, it is a good hint with some limitation. So, let us move beyond to a few other quotations. Now, this quotation by William Blake is another dimension and another set of questions. He says that looking through the glass at our invisible soul, we find that our material self is the perfect reflection of it. So, he is binding us into a certain definition. First of all, looking through the glass at our invisible soul, as if you are separate from the soul and you are looking through the glass. Well, this is one way to look at it, at least at the starting phase. We find that our material self is the perfect reflection of it, perfect reflection of soul. Now, the question here is, the material self comes in all shapes and sizes and variety and qualities. Each material self that exists, including me, you and everyone else, is slightly different from one another. It is unique, which means that everyone's soul is also unique. If it is a perfect reflection of the material self, the material self and the soul is perfect reflection. So, this is good as a starter, but it may not lead us very far in true understanding and encountering or realizing the soul, which may not be separate from us, which may not be away from us and of course not visible. It is in a dimension that our physical body cannot easily reach and our senses cannot easily perceive. So, it is a good lesson. So, this quotation by Fred Allen Wolf leads us into many directions to explore the presence and experience of soul. The vibration of nothing is spirit. So, we all have learned from scientists that this is a vibrational universe. So, the vibration of nothing could that also be vibration? Maybe, maybe not. Very subtle, not noticeable, not perceptible, not experienceable vibration is possible. May not be measurable, but possible. So, the vibration of nothing is spirit. Okay, number one. Number two, the reflection of spirit at notes of time is soul. So, this is uh, notes of time, dimensions of time is soul, which is a reflection of spirit. Okay, that's one 
another way to look at it. The reflection of spirit, spirit at nodes of space is matter, which means the spirit reflected on the nodes of time is soul reflected at the nodes of space is matter. And finally, the reflection of soul in matter is self. Okay, so this is a roundabout way of uh, different fractions of soul and spirit and space and time and matter. All that is kind of woven together. It may be difficult to understand, that is obvious to me, and it can be confusing, but it is a way of thinking about it, which is to explore all possibilities and then arrive at the real truth. So first we are wandering here and there and then slowly narrowing it down to our deep understanding. That is the message. This part of traditional wisdom is kind of open-ended and leaves all possibilities open. There are as many ways to God as there are created souls. So first it is assuming that souls are created, which means they don't exist before or after life form and your soul is created. Individual souls are created. And how many of them are there? There are as many ways to know God. So one thing is quite clear here that the way to know God or whatever is the concept of God, there are as many ways to God as there are created souls. So the final point I think to understand here is there are as many ways to know God as there are created souls, which means each individual soul or self seeks to the destiny of knowing God in his or her own individual way. So each and every one of us have our own individual way to the journey, to the truth, to our concept of God. So, the comforting point here is that none of us are absolutely wrong because no matter which path we choose, it is different from everyone else and it is not absolutely valid or invalid, which means there is a possibility. So, keep searching and we shall find in our own ways. The last one is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Time and space are but physiological colors. Time and space are but physiological colors which the eye makes, but the soul is the light. So at least we learn from this quotation that light goes through the eyes to see colors. Without colors, without light or in darkness there is no color because color is how light is reflected from an object. So the color of my shirt, a little bit gray and uh, amber, in the dark, will not, you will not see any color. 
but because light is falling upon my clothes and my face and my graying hair, you see them see all the different colors. So similarly, time and space are physiological colors which the eyes make, but the soul is the light. Soul is not limited to eyes, but when the light shines, eyes begin to see colors. In other words, the variety and diversity and manyness is a perception. For truth, there is no manyness, truth of light. It just is and because it is, we see the variety and diversity and manyness. So with this quotation, I'll close this video and I hope this conversation has given some hints to help us move further in our journey to the truth and reality. Namaste and we'll meet again soon.